on spygaper.io. Today we have Magdalene Small. Magdalene is the uh, head of partnerships at HubSpot. Magdalene, welcome to the show. Hi, really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. So six years at HubSpot, can you briefly share the six year journey, like 60 seconds? Yeah, absolutely. So I started at HubSpot as a very entry level salesperson. I had come out of an opera background, wanted a career shift. So got into sales, worked my way up, was a sales rep for about three years, selling to our small business segment. So working with startups, early stage founders and small companies. Um, From there, I transitioned to our HubSpot for startups team, where I currently lead partnerships in the Southwest and Mountain region. So now I get to work with startups more directly. I work with our venture capital partners, incubators, accelerators, and organizations that fund and mentor startups to help provide education and software discounts to them. And on the topic of remote, um, I was in our Cambridge office for my first four years at HubSpot. After that, as an individually contributing sales rep, I decided that I wanted to move back to LA. I had gone to college there, just really loved it. Um, So luckily I had the opportunity, my manager was open to it, my team was open to it to move remote. And then um, I ended up staying remote because of obviously pandemic and we can get into that in a little bit, but I kind of chose remote life and then was looking for a role that would get me a little bit more out of it. The role I'm in currently, we do usually a lot of events, typically they would be in person, now they've been quite virtual. Um, So then was forced into kind of a much more virtual full-time remote setting than I was expecting, but it's been an interesting journey and I've had quite a lot of, I think now I'm going on three years of full-time remote experience. So, you know, let's start by discussing uh, your, uh, uh, you went remote before the pandemic. So what were the key learnings, takeaways, you know, especially going from the East Coast to the West Coast, managing on the East Coast, the three hour time lag, the difference, you know. So what were the key learnings you picked up from there that helped you through the pandemic to be a good, great team player, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the biggest learnings is that remote, it takes a little bit more planning. You kind of have to plan some of the structure that you enjoy in the office back in. So by that, I mean, you have to be much more watchful about things like boundaries and your time and your activity, Um, kind of your support routine. I think everyone feels a little bit differently about what routine means to them, what that looks like for them, but you kind of have to build it back in and be really, really mindful of it. So for me personally, um, I noticed that one of the things I loved about the office was connecting with my coworkers, you know, getting a coffee in between calls, talking through a deal, things like that. You don't necessarily get that as easily over remote. So you have to be a lot more proactive about slacking people, about maybe setting up like asynchronous calls or setting up a call where maybe, you know, I'm walking my dog and we're not really talking about anything. We're just kind of catching up for 15 minutes just to have that human element built back in where you can kind of just talk about things outside of a formalized meeting setting. Um, Also, separation of work life and home life for me was really important. I noticed that I wasn't loving working from my same room in my same apartment. So just trying to separate the space, maybe it's me going outside. Eventually when things opened back up in LA, I was able to do a co-working space, but Personally, for me, having the flexibility to be around other people or just out of my same apartment setting, um, that was really helpful. So I kind of think of it as like separation of work life, home life. That was probably the most impactful thing that I noticed that I really had to do to keep myself happy while being remote. Got it, got it. So you're into sales, right? So sales individuals are very extrovert by nature. So, you know, you've mentioned about the events and everything. They get, the sales folks, they get the energy from people, right? But the last uh, 15 months have been strange, you know, one of its kind kind of stuff. So uh, what tactics, you know, virtual tactics and those kind of things, you know, helped you in kind of like achieving your targets? And I don't know, do you want to share yeah. some examples with us on that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it goes back to one of the biggest things that we all started doing as a team, especially my team that I moved on to. We are more global, so we're kind of naturally more remote as a team. We've got people that live in various regions, including international regions. What we started doing was setting up coffee chats with each other that were scheduled basically outside of our normal team meeting times, outside of like hours when we would be discussing business. Um, so that we could just have some space to, you know, talk about projects we were working on, talk about life stuff, get to know each other on the more personal side, and just be able to kind of like have some of that natural conversation that happens, um, as a more extroverted person. So just have that space. I think it's, it's a funny thing to have to schedule in your social space, 
but we started to all notice if we weren't scheduling it in, we weren't connecting in that way. And we were feeling all were a little disconnected and then projects, things that we were working on that would be top of mind. We'd find out later that it was on someone else's mind. We're like, we should have connected about that. We should have talked about that. But if you don't schedule in the time and space to have it, it doesn't happen as naturally. So I think just being a little bit more proactive about that was really helpful. Um, and then personally, once things have now started to kind of open up back into what I'll call like a hybrid world where pe people are feeling a little bit more comfortable to maybe open up an office on a flex schedule or go back into a co-working space, that I found is super helpful. Um, I think that's kind of what the world I could see going forward is I like having the option to be around people, whether it's a co-working space, a coffee space, or the actual HubSpot office, if I'm in a city where we have an office. Um, it's really that just flexibility to be able to say like, hey, I have three hours today where maybe I'm working on kind of big brain creative project type stuff, or I've got a lot of emails to send out, you know, things where I kind of need to be around people to feel some energy. Having that option is really great. And then also having the option to say, you know what, I'm on back to back calls today, I'm really comfortable working from my home. I got my great desk set up. Um, that flex, I think, and especially in talking with a lot of my coworkers, that's what we're all really loving right now is just the flexibility and the option to be around people, maybe to be in a little bit more um, public of a setting, but then have that flexibility work remote when we want it. Got it. So last couple of questions, you know, in regard to uh, what we've seen uh, from new team cultures, you know, the bond between the new hires, the new recruits, individuals that are joining in and becoming team players, you know, that is a challenge that multiple organizations or multiple companies are going through right now, you know, getting the team culture spread out through, uh, through over Zoom or Google Meets or Teams, right? So uh, are you facing those challenges amongst your teams with the new members joining in and how are, what strategies are you using to cope up with it? Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think anyone's going to feel that a little bit, right? When you've got people who have just joined an organization and they haven't gotten to meet their team in person. Um, what we're doing, like I said, is trying to connect in those more human ways. And then we've been trying to do a lot more like Zoom team mixers and be creative with that in terms of giving ourselves some space to connect, doing activities over Zoom, trivia nights. We baked bread as a team one time. We have a lot of Slack rooms and we've also started Slack channels internally that are city-based. So we're quite global as an organization. So now I'm in like a remote HubSpotters channel. I'm in a remote LA HubSpotters channel, a remote California HubSpotters channel, a remote Midwest channel for when I'm back in Wisconsin with family. Um, but just kind of having those groups and making sure also that I'm cognizant of being active in those so I can welcome new employees in, you know, give them tips on an area if they're moving to an area I know. Kind of just being more intentional about, I think, welcoming new people in and making sure that like, hey, if a new team member joins, I'm not going to run into them in person. So I need to actually make sure and get on their calendar have a coffee, you know, virtual coffee with them, set up me maybe be like a monthly meetup just so we can kind of talk and touch base. I think you just have to be more intentional about making sure that you do loop those new team members in. Um, but it's actually been, we found it's working pretty well in our team. I think we're close as a team. We just make sure that we talk pretty frequently. And we also know kind of what makes people tick, what works for different people's schedules, um, and are just pretty cognizant to communication styles as we're trying to work, you know, with each other remotely. Got Last question, you know, mental health, you know, th that's a topic which we're hearing people are discussing for the last few months as well, you know. So what top three piece of advice you would give to listeners, you know, how to be sane or how to take care of their mental health as well as be productive, be super productive, you know, and what you do. So a following question would be what you do daily that may helps you to be super productive yeah um i think boundaries is first you have to set boundaries for yourself around the hours you're going to work the way in which you're going to work the separation between home and work life even if you're not leaving your same space just making sure that there's something that's differentiating your morning routine maybe from your work day from your night routine and being really upfront about hours when maybe you are offline. I think that's something we've seen across our org is really making sure that we're giving people space to say, you know what, I'm gonna be working from this hour to this hour. And after that, it's my time with my partner or with my family or just with myself. Um, so really making sure that we are aware and respectful of different people's boundaries around that work-life balance. Cause otherwise what we've all, I think what I noticed happening a lot to myself was I was just kind of half working all the time. 
So making sure that I'm really planning and structuring in my day and purposely being really intentional about separating out my work hours versus my home life. Um, I think the second thing tying into that would be be vocal about burnout. Um, I really lucked out and that HubSpot is very supportive of our employees, very supportive of our remote workers and kind of got ahead of the curve and was noticing that people were burning out and really did a lot to support us. But be vocal. I think everyone has experienced burnout at some point over the past 15 months. The best thing you can do is say that you need time off, say that you need help, say that you need a different restructuring, different hours, different communication style, whatever it might be. Um, just don't sit on burnout for too long. And I think don't assume also that your teammates aren't experiencing it. Make sure you have a safe space to talk about it and figure out a solution to it. Um, and the last thing I would say is, um, again, I've talked about this a lot, but just make sure you're like being intentional about connecting with your teammates, intentional about connecting with your work um, and routine will help that. But yeah, the more intentionality you can put behind scheduling in with your connection, that work-life balance, and don't be afraid to advocate for yourself as we're all navigating this really kind of new normal. Got it. Magdalene, thank you so much for being on the show. You know, we would have loved to talk longer, but, you know, uh, I'm forced to keep all of them within like 15 minutes max. Thank you so much for being on the show. Take care of yourself and stay safe. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. Um.